As you can see, I am probably from a slightly different background. My work is uh, mostly coming from a design, a design thinking discipline. On the other side, a civic organization. But I think the, these cross paths of um, um, different disciplines is quite interesting because, um, for example, civic organizations, um, GovZero is a civil organization of uh, 11,000 people, and we have a lot of contributors making projects um, throughout the past 10 years. We made a lot of amazing projects, and incentivizing and incentivizing contributions without pay, without tokens, for uh, uh, to these contributors. How is that achieved? I think that can be of some reference to the audience here today. All right, so if you haven't heard about GovZero before, GovZero is basically a, a civic collaboration experiment in Taiwan. So we, this is our 10th year. We will be having our 10th year anniversary very soon. We have over 11,000 contributors. Uh, we've done uh, over 50 hackathons in the past 10 years. Uh, we have 800 proposals, uh, ha hackathon proposals in the past 10 years. 700 of them made a Slack channel trying to sustain those, those proposals. And we have a wide audience in Taiwan. And there are a couple of different um, projects that may be worth mentioning because the whole organization, at least in the earlier stage, is all about open data. So during the early stage of the pandemic, one thing they did was to ask the government to release the data of how um, um, uh, masks are being distributed to pharmacies, how the masks are being distributed to the convenience stores and all that. So people, uh, so, so GovZero projects, these project owners build real-time maps for people to find these, these masks. That's one, one thing that uh, the, the ecosystem did to help uh, the whole society combat uh, the, uh, the, the pandemic. The other examples, including there are working groups that's, only try, uh, that's trying to uh, basically do fact checks on fake news to fight against uh, fake news. And the other thing, there are like experimental uh, education initiatives inside the, the whole uh, ecosystem and organization. So as you can see, it's a very vibrant ec ecosystem that's supporting civic in innovation in a way. And we're here basically to find out uh, why they did this and how we can basically supercharge the whole GovZero uh, 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 ecosystem. So DAOZero is an initiative that we just started uh, a couple of months ago where we define our mission to supercharge GovZero, to supercharge this social impact um, uh, projects in the future. And Taiwan is a very special place um, in a way that it has this open democracy. On the other hand, it is has some political uh, sense of political urgency somehow. So the civic innovation, the civic uh, movement is quite um, um, uh, active in, in Taiwan. So what we're trying to do as, as Dao Zero, we're basically trying to import these global experiments, global knowledge into Taiwan using Taiwan and uh, GovZero as a field for experimentation and then export our knowledge, our, our, our learnings from them to the global level. So um, the only thing uh, we did as a design, a design thinking um, um, person, basically what we did was we were trying to empathize with the whole community and this is, we've done a lot of like um, these uh, interviews, we, we've been breaking down notes into what people see, what people say, what people do, what people hear, um, and basically converge that into their pain points, into their, their gains inside the, the organization, inside the ecosystem, and trying to find out what really moves people. And this is a basic example. For example, like people see like these uh, innovative projects being done um, as GovZero projects, they see in the news, they talk about their mentalities, their mentality. One thing they say for thousands and thousands of times is basically saying that um, don't, uh, don't ask why nobody's doing something, just be that nobody and get it done. And there are hackathons, there are, there are people are building, hacking government, <laughs> government data and trying to release those home data to the whole, uh, whole society. They talk about open source, they talk about 
bureaucracy, they hear about their accomplish, accomplishments in the news and stuff like that. So this is, this builds together to become a whole social movement in a way. So um, in terms, uh, when we were thinking about bringing Web3 into the whole, um, uh, whole ecosystem, into the GovZero ecosystem, we were thinking about a couple of questions uh, that we needed to know in order to simply to design a, a system that works for GovZero. The first one is we need to understand who we are designing for. The second thing is what motivates or demotivates people from comp contributing without pay. And what are, uh, what, what are their pain points? What's stopping, uh, stopping them from reaching their goals? What, uh, how are decisions being made in such an organization? Because there are no hierarchies. And what are their expectations to Web3 since GovZero was not a Web3 organization to start with? So uh, we start with who we are designing for. Uh, it, the, the question may seem like a very simple one. That, and so we are designing for GovZero. We might be designing for the project owners or the contributors, but it's after we've done so, so, much, so many interviews, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. There are, there are many different types of project owners inside the organizations. There are project owners who come from a uh, project management background. They know how to divide tasks and distribute them, add, delegate them. And the other type of uh, uh, project owners come from a background when they, where they have a lot of specific knowledge in a specific topic, but they don't really know how to delegate all these, um, um, uh, assign all the tasks to different people. And the other thing, the other kind of a project manager is a lone wolf, right? They basically pick up um, a, a short-term project for two weeks, they did it, they, they release it to the community, tell everybody, and that's the end of it. And we also are looking at uh, contributors. There are contributors who are who are at the core, they, they provide, they, they contribute for a longer term to specific projects, but there are also contributors who jump between a lot of different projects because they have a very specific scale. For example, UI UX design, or they maybe they, they do research and, and stuff like that. And there are like OGs, bridgers, who are trying to connect people together so people can find the right person for them. So that's the, uh, so understanding who we are designing for is very important. We define the core people we want to design for are the PMs and the contributors, core contributors, and as well as the guerrilla contributors. So uh, the second thing we wanted to know is what motivates them without like being paid exactly. So the project owners, of course, the, the thing they always talk about is about impact. So they want to see uh, recognition from their users, they want to see recognition in the news, they, they want to see recognition, some kind of positive feedbacks that tells them what they're doing is actually making a difference in a way. Um, but what makes them, um, what makes this, the, this impact so sustainable? Why are they doing this for years and years without pay? There are uh, other, other contributing factors. For example, one is they're basically there, there are sometimes, most of the time, there are overlapping goals for them with their, their careers or their lives. This is basically what they, they may be a school teacher. This is where they, they experiment with new experimental education methods. And the other kind of um, uh, project owners is basically super responsible, super passionate. But all these, uh, these two types of project owners are actually really the scarce resource inside this organization, because uh, as you can as you can see, these two qualities are really hard to find in in, in people, basically. So, how do we empower these people? How do we empower these project owners to actually make impact? Becomes a very core uh, question that we're looking at. And the others, what are the motivations for the contributors? They also want to make make impacts, but it's coming from a slightly different angle, uh, mostly so. Um, they want to make impact because they think about the return, return of their time spent. They want to um, work on uh, projects that actually makes impact. Uh, they get the signals from if they see uh, opinion leaders inside the projects. They want to see 
if the project is in the news, if the tech is, uh, is cool, and all that kind of stuff, those are all signals telling them if these, uh, the, this project is going to sustain or if, if this project is impact, will be impactful in the future. And also, on the other side, if you're a, a Web3 developer wanting to start learning about smart contracts that contribute to specific projects that basically as a way of practicing uh, these coding skills. Um, so there are pain points for, so the, the pain points for project owners is not funding. Uh, it is because uh, people don't pay others basically to, to, to contribute. It's the people. Uh, and it's not more people, more contributors. It's usually the right contributors. For some project, more contributors is actually the right contributors. For example, if you're trying to script something, if you're trying to do translations, that those low skill, uh, lower level scale tasks uh, that needs a lot of people to contribute, that's basically um, the type of project that needs a lot of contributors. But the other kind of uh, project who are trying to build a DID, a silver token, uh, uh, reputation system, that's another matter, right? You need another kind of core contributors. So finding the right people is the biggest pain points for these project owners to go forward instead of funding. So, um, and pain points for contributors is not much. <laughs> the main reason is that they can uh, come and leave as they want. So they don't have a lot of pressure. They don't need to sustain any kind of pains inside the, inside the organization. So that's also something, to, something quite interesting that we observed. Um, and the other thing that's kind of uh, interesting to us because we think how decisions are being made inside the community, inside the DAO, is actually very interesting because that is the culture of that DAO. That is the culture of that community. So in, in GovZero, uh, we, we discovered, we call this a di dynamic delegation. Um, uh, di we call this dynamic delegation. And basically, meaning that um, a very practical example is that if you attend meetings, you get to sit there and make decisions with the people who also attend the meetings. And the people who didn't attend the meetings basically delegate their decision-making power to those who do. And because people who go to these meetings don't always, um, don't, don't, aren't, aren't always the same. So you're not delegating to a specific group of people or a specific person. That's the kind of uh, delegation that people are putting trust in people who actually are doing something. And this is what they call a duocracy that, that uh, everyone may have uh, heard about. And um, for us, because we're designing this DID system or Sobon token system, reputation, uh, reputation system for GovZero. Also, something we've been thinking about is also because this, this kind of duocracy is being implemented or being done implicitly. What if um, we, we make it explicit? What if we give a Sobon token, a contribution token to you uh, uh, for every meeting you attend? How would that, and reflect that in the decision-making power when decisions need to be made? How does that, that change the dynamic? So this is the first experiment we're probably going to run in the short term to understand the, the, effects, the, the, the effects that uh, this kind of design will have on GovZero, on these kind of organizations. And also, it's important because they don't from a back, uh, uh, they're not people from a background of uh, uh, Web3. So they are usually very nervous, anxious about over financialization of things. So probably issuing a, a ERC20 token that's, uh, that, that can be tradable, uh, who represents voting power, that might not be the first thing that we will be doing. Uh, but they are very pro uh, decentralized society, the IDs, and other things. So these, are my, these might be the, the, the sentiment that we're looking at. So the uh, we basically, because our goal uh, at Dow Zero is to accelerate whatever uh, GovZero ha has been doing, so we basically mapped out this flywheel, start with great projects, great, great proposals, uh, they need to find people. We need to help them define and find the kind of contributors that they need. And 
um, and try to find a way to encourage, it, encourage them, to incentivize them, and at a certain point, the project needs to scale. So they will, they will need funding, they will need more contributors. How is that done? And then they need visibility somehow. So when, when they are being seen in the news, when they are being seen somewhere, then they can get more contributors and they can get more project owners to, into the ecosystem. And basically all these colored points, as you can see, are the, the, the places that we think we can uh, somehow design for, right? So these are some of the things that, that we thought we, we, we can design for. We use this uh, thing called How My Ways to, to define the, the problems we're trying to solve. Um, for example, how do we, and, and we overlap with that something uh, Web3 is really good at, which is incentivizing and distributing, right? So how do we find, attract, and incentivize contributors to make more contributions inside this kind of Ecosystem is one question, and the, 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 the answer may be Sobang token, maybe the IDs that we're going to build uh, next. And the other one is how do we distribute uh, funding or infuse funding into the right projects going forward? This is another, the answer may or may not be quadratic funding or others. Um, so these are the things we're, we're basically looking at. And to design an org organization chart for, for this specific purpose, what we did is that we have our user research at the fundamental level um, as, uh, because we defined the things that can uh, help us reach our end goal, which is to supercharge Gov0. So at this base level, we will, for a project who contributes to these uh, community demands, who contributes to these specific goals, we infuse funding, we infuse resources into these projects, so we make sure the flywheel keeps flowing. So in the end, what we're trying to do is to supercharge Gov0 to be an impact accelerator of societies. And um, this is uh, the first experiments will be in Taiwan, and then if successful, we'll export it um, to, to other places. So that will be my presentation. Thank you. So it's more of a general question, but uh, based on the approaches that you some on the CryptoCon so far over the last two presentations, uh, what do you think it could be the leverage points, for example, to apply that to accelerate uh, I mean, the implementation of the DAO and so on? Uh, uh, what I mean is, given the CryptoCon methods, uh, what do you think that are the low leverage points to accelerate the development of the community? Right, so um, just, just, uh, just to make sure I understand the question is, um, how do we accelerate, uh, accelerate the contributions to the, to the community or? Yeah, it's sort of an open-ended question in the sense that how can crypto eco methods uh, help right. the success of the DAO? Oh, of course. So uh, I think the relevance is when we define how we, uh, so now mostly people are, are using crypto economics on tradable tokens, right, for, to incentivize um, uh, people financially in a way, right. But if it's not based on financial incentives, it's based on reputation incentives, so, um, or decision making incentives. If we, uh, it, for example, the decentralized society structure, the uh, decentralized ID structure, if we do, do Sobang tokens to others, how does that uh, incentivize people? Does that, first of all, does that incentivize people to do more? How, how does that incentivize the people to, to contribute more? Does that need to be reflected only in their status or does that need to be reflected in their um, in, in their decision-making power in voting, um, or does that, uh, does that contribution need to decrease over time um, for, for a while? That, that is to be, to be designed. Um, basically, what, what I've been doing here is uh, trying to understand the uh, original culture and the structure, decision-making uh, process, so we can design something for them. Um, that, that's basically it. And so that, I, I think that's also 
when we talk about we're turning democracy, implicit democracy into explicit democracy, how does that affect the culture and how does that, uh, we don't know the answer yet. We, the, the experience is still be, to be done. So um, I hope that answers your question. Please. Hi, thank you for the presentation, really interesting. Um, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts around how to measure contributions or if it's something work in progress. Right, uh, that is something work in progress, but um, there, are, there are very centralized ways to do this and there are very decentralized ways to do it. I think the most centralized way is for, they call it pods, uh, pod owners to evaluate, of course, that's one way. Um, but the other rather decentralized way is peer review of some kind. Um, if, for example, we're, we're in, in, in the culture of Gov Zero, basically, if you attend a meeting, they give you fried chicken for to eat, right? So if there's virtual fried chickens that has ERC20 tokens that you can give to people, uh, and maybe the distribution of these ERC20 tokens, the pod owners can, can maybe have more, the, the contributors can have less. The more you contribute, you basically accumulate these tokens that you can give to each other. That can be an experiment we might be able to run. We, we're not entirely sure how, so this experiment is to be in a, in, a, in a progressive way, right? So, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll see, but uh, peer review or even reviews from, from, from either donors or, or other community, the people, uh, the people for who are being if affected, how do we give them tokens to give away to the, the contributors? Uh, that's also something um, we've been thinking about. But I think one of the challenges, because the variety of projects is so, so different inside an organization like this, so unify them, standardize them, can be a little tricky. So that's also something we've been, we've been thinking about. But, but yeah, that's, that's a very good question um, that, that we need to uh, do more. Maybe I'll share in the next uh, crypto ego <laughs> day or something. Great, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. <laughs>